This bracket right here also attaches with a couple of Allen um, that will um, attach to the belt. And the belt comes from this bracket, goes all the way down, loops behind here, and you have another uh, pulley that's geared pulley. And that gear pulley transfers that over to behind this piece of metal. And this metal, it goes back around the back side and it goes all the way through the center of this box to the outside where it connects to this other pulley. And this is where, where actually the motion is being uh, moved back and forth when this spins in a counterclockwise direction it moves that head to the right. And we're going to be talking about drive side and operator side. Every time you look in the front of a machine, you are on the operator side because this is where you operate. The drive side, usually of any machine industrial works, is on the rear. That is where most of the drive motors and most industrial machines are located at. We have an operator side, the drive side. Then we have, and to the left, is going to usually be your upstream side and then going to the right is usually your downstream side because most motion goes from left to right okay so when we talk about that at least you know what, what's going on but this little stepper motor right here has it is an open loop stepper motor which means that this stepper motor does not have a decoder attached to it it's one of the cheaper ones um, not to say it doesn't work for what it does but it is a less expensive stepper motor um, it's probably a NEMA 23, somewhere around there. And when we pull this off, we'll be able to identify that and on there. But we want to get some video before we do anything about where everything the placement goes. And then this stepper motor bracket is held, holds on that bracket, attaches to this other bracket right here. And this bracket is what holds our, um, our lens. This lens right here is a, at a 45 degree angle from the projected end, which is the laser coming in this way. And this lens mount will project the light from the laser going to here all the way over to our head. And this head has a 45 degree angle. And this is these, these screws right here um, help to guide that down. So it should be coming out exactly in the middle of your nozzle. Okay. Now, where are the other parts and pieces here that we can look at? So we got a cable tie way. This cable rolling tie um, helps whenever this thing is moving back and forth. It keeps the cables in line. It keeps stress off them so they're not falling down and they don't detach. Inside of this cable pathway, we got a couple different things that come out of it. The first one, we'll just grab the stars and just going out here. This one right here will follow this down. And if I shake that, let's see. You can see that this actually goes to a little laser um, red dot that you can see, and this is supposed to help you align your laser up. Now, a single dot is not the best. If you're going to use a dot, use two. And the reason for that, of course, is um, when you have both of those setting at a point, and that point's in focus, whenever you pull up or raise or drop that, those two, those two dots, the being one looking like one dot, will start pulling apart or pushing together. And then you'll know when you're in focus when both of those dots if you have it aligned properly or at one point. So I would definitely recommend that if you're gonna use a dot system to do that on the outside. And I'll just have one because if you pull this right up or down, this dot, where depending on that angle is, is gonna be further this way or this way. And so it's gonna be hard to tell on the side here if you're actually in focus. So that's one thing. So this one right here goes to your laser dot. The next one is your air. This little tubing in here, I think it's like a six or eight millimeter. We'll confirm that. And you got a quick release connectors that go here. This falls all the way down to the side. And this goes actually into the housing right here. And we'll see that a little better here. And it's just screwed in. So if you start feeling some air leaks and stuff like that and um, not doing too well, you might check this. I've also had a kind of an occasion when I am cutting um, stone or slate or engraving um, sometimes if you have air blowing through here what could happen is you could have some debris that gets lodged in here and a really quick test you can do is just disconnect this top one up here and just blow through it 
And if you've seen any resistance um, in that, you probably got a clogged elbow in here. You probably got some dirt, dirt and debris that's stuck in here, and you can pull this off and you can test it and see where this blow through it. There's no valves in there, so you should be easily to, to find out if you can test or not to pull it off of there. So that's the, the cable for the laser. Now we establish the air. And is there anything else? And to the answer to that, the answer is no, there's nothing else. There's just two of these two things. There's no other electronics on this head, this type of head besides those two things. One's your red dot and one is your air supply. Okay? So these pathways, but look back here, at the beginning of these, there's only two. Okay. Now we come down a little further and we notice that there's also two more wires. And both of these wires, one right here. I should pull this forward a little bit so we can see it. to the bottom here so we get a wire coming here this goes to our sensor and we can take a look at the sensor there you can read exactly what that sensor is and I do a screenshot of that you can go on a Google um, lens and pull up that it's a PL 5 n this is for this one and get some more information about how many voltages it takes 10 to 30 volts DC all that good stuff and then we have another wire that comes down through here to the bottom and this other wire that goes to that box let's go and trace that back see where that goes so that comes over the other wire that is um right there behind the sensor get the camera in here ah where are we at I'm kind of do backwards and upside down there we go so this other wire that comes down through here it goes along this bar. You pull this back out through. You will see that that is actually attached to your LED light strip. That's what powers that LED light strip. So that's all the cables that are on this attached to this bar right now is just that. Now the bearing, just like this right here, this armature has a bearing block with attachments. So does your other, your Y-axis rail. Your y-axis is to just having one bar has two that the x-axis um, gantry rides on. You've got one right here, and then you got one right here. And you can tell where it stops because you have a grease build up right there. Okay? Same thing on this one. There's a little, I can see it a little bit on my side, but there's a little stop right there where it stops. It doesn't go full, fully the full length of the bed. Now, if I pull this out of the way, and I come back here with all the great light that I have here. I'm gonna put this in one, and then I can put a light on here. There we go. Um, we can see how it, it is going back here. And then there's the hoses. Here is our um, stepper motor. It's in the back. It's got actually got an axle that goes through both sides. And we'll show that a little later. And here's some mounting brackets there. There's our other um limit switch and uh it will do that does the same exact thing so when this arm comes up to go to home it comes over and then goes over top that limit switch that limit switch will light up it'll bring back forward and it will home it down to a zero position and then this one right here does the same thing goes to the left as both this happening also homes that back to a zero position if you start having problems with your uh, X or Y axis when it starts up to grinding or messing um, won't stop or sound like it's destroying itself or it stops to move or whatever else the first thing I would do is to check that your limit sensors back here are actually lighting up if they're not lighting up then you can actually there's two screws back here that you can actually uh, loosen and you can adjust them up or down or in or out and when you put your metal gantry over top of it or a magnet over top of it you'll see it light up but you want to use your gantry you want to turn make sure to turn them off when you do that and really you want to feel this too one of the great things that you want to do is whenever you're having an issue with some things is to just manually just feel it see if it's getting stuck see if it's got a place where it's caught catching up a lot of this stuff is done by feel okay all right so that is our gantry now let's go ahead and take a look at the wires coming off of the stepper motor. 
So we got one wire here from the stepper motor. Okay. This is on the base. We've got a wire right here. This is this wire right here is coming from our lights. This one is for the LED. This one is for our, our limit sensor. Sorry, I mixed that up. That's actually the one that's going down the rail, so that's actually for the lights down below the gantry. The one over here is for our limit sensor. And then we have a black hose right here that is our air uh, assist, okay? That comes around here to the side of the body. That goes down through this channel right here. Right here, I'm gonna bring this back a little bit. And, take, and it goes all the way to the back, okay? Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and talk about a couple things as far as the gantry. How, are, how is a gantry, how are the belts and stuff like it hooked up to the gantry? And how are the pulleys, um, the cog pulleys, um, set up so, and how are they adjusted? Okay, so that's a good question. First things first, the cog pulley assembly on these are a lower grade type. They are not really with a bearing on the outside. They're captured, you see that, by a little hook, a piece of metal right there, okay? And you have your bearing, your internal bearing, um, I actually mounted the, the pulley to that bearing um, right in there. And um, this end right here looks like it is not actually tooth. It is actually a roller bearing that is smooth, which is kind of weird. I would have thought that would have been a, a gear type bearing, but it is not. It's just a smooth bearing. Um, and maybe maybe they have it that way so it doesn't mesh when this is not aligned properly but the only way to adjust that how much tension is on that belt is by those two little set screws right there right here okay these set screws what they do is they push up against the frame and when they're pushing in it pulls that bracket outwards and you see that Let me get a little closer here it pulls this bracket outwards and see how that's at a candelier tilt there if you have it too much tilted, what's going to happen is that the, the, this belt is going to run a right uphill one way or another. So by being an off-centered, this belt can prematurely wear. It can go ahead and come down here to the bottom, and it can roll over, and you can have some damage on there. So one thing that you want to do with your CILs is inspect your belts. So we can look at this belt. Here's it again upside down. The belt they offer is probably a standard size belt. You can probably track that down online. Synchronous is an HTD 3M belt. It, model number is EO605011Y. And we flip this over and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna inspect this belt. We're gonna see, look for any kind of damage. There's a little bit of fraying right there. Oh, the dust or whatever else on there. Are we looking for any kind of debris or any kind of thing on here that's going to just suggest to us that this belt is wearing out or wearing prematurely now this is a wearable part um, I would suggest that anybody who's going to be running this for any kind of industrial business have extra belts on hand and in your inventory you do not want to be shut down when you're doing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of orders um, buy one belt and if you're losing all the days worth of work that's a lot of money to wait around for a belt to come through so make sure you have these extra hands they sometimes they do snap I haven't had one yet but a cheap belt as they are have them extras okay um, so that's one thing there's your pulley there's your side and again they're all attached you see this look inside of here you get a bracket right in there that attaches it to the the bearing block right here, just like the other one. Okay, and each of these bear, these um, linear rail blocks, and you see this one's actually a little twisted. It comes up a little bit on the end from where they got it cut. Okay, these are held down by some uh, hex head screws or bolts that are probably in taft and wired. And I don't know if I feel a screw back here, but the channel which they ride on top of 
is just a C channel that's been painted, okay? That C channel comes all the way back. You have your Z axis top cap assembly attached to that. Um, and if you look back in the front here, you can see that that looks like it has actually been welded to the other one, the other part of the frame here. Now this frame, it's also a C channel, pretty much the same thing. Comes all the way down, same pulley capturing the vise down here and you should be able to pull this and it should not be sloppy and it shouldn't be so tight that it's hurting the belt and breaking it out there so you know that's what it looks like when you flex it it just bounces gives a little bit but it's not wearing out the block now come back over here same thing we have another set of belts and this is on both sides it's a little bit easier to see on this side but they come over they attach to this right here, you can see that. Lift over, screw down. And their whole job is to come back here. And there's another set of pulleys. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can't. But there's another set of pulleys back here on the back side. Probably a pillow block. Probably not a pillow block, probably just a little bearing that rest on the back side and it comes a bar that comes all the way across here to our um, servo driver probably another it's also another open loop as there's no encoder it comes back on the other side and the other sides again have another block back here these two bolts is what actually holds that other bearing in place and then your belt travels on the inside of the C channel comes over here attaches to this and this top gantry, the underside of this, just like this side, is captured with a, another piece of metal that loops over and it grabs a hold of this. So whenever that, that um, servo motor in the back moves in this direction or this direction, it moves corresponding belt, the belt pulls the gantry forward and then pushes the gantry back when it needs to. So interesting stuff here okay now first question is there any really bespoke things that are here that we would want to change out later yes if we want a bigger bed then we need a our bigger gantry then we can do a couple different things the first thing that we can do is to find us a, another piece of metal that we can make sure that it's square and attached firmly and that the, the the X and Y axis above these where we're mounting to is parallel all the way around. This height right here on this side has got to be the same exact height as that side in the back. And then this side right here is also got to be the same height as this side. And then these two sides you're on your um, Y axis have got to be parallel playing with your two sides on your X axis, okay? And then we could do that. So that's the, that's the first part. Now let's go ahead and work on getting this thing took apart and let's go ahead and take all the pieces off and show you exactly what tools you're gonna to need to do that. If we wanna do a full tear down, to examine this unit, um, I'll be right back in part two and uh, we'll start that process. All right, thanks. And you want more like it, um, please stop by our site on YouTube and we'll also have a Patreon page set up here and I'll also have um, members only access on our uh, Facebook community and also our website. We'll be doing some training. This will be a part of that training. Um, again, my name is Don uh, for Scottish Giant LLC, and have a great day. Talk to you later.